Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we've got an interesting video for you that's a continuation of our ongoing investigations into AMD's new Ryzen Mobile 4000 processors. We've already done some comprehensive benchmarking of parts like the Ryzen 7 4800H and Ryzen 5 4600H, finding them to be very impressive, particularly for multi-core workloads up against Intel's current mobile lineup. But what we haven't done so far is investigate the performance difference between AMD's Zen 2 mobile processors and their desktop lineup that launched last year. We know that Ryzen Mobile 4000 is powerful with its up to eight core Zen 2 CPU, but just how close are we getting with these laptop focused APUs to AMD's fully fledged power unlocked Zen 2 desktop CPUs? Does Zen 2 on the desktop pull significantly ahead of Ryzen Mobile 4000 or do the laptop chips offer competitive performance? In today's video, we'll be focusing on the H series parts, which are designed for high performance laptops, comparing them to Zen 2 desktop CPUs in our full laptop benchmark suite. We'll be primarily looking at the Ryzen 7 4800H, which is an eight core APU with a 45 watt TDP, as well as the Ryzen 5 4600H that brings six cores to a 45 watt TDP as well. Representing AMD's Zen 2 desktop lineup, I've gone with a core for core approach here. Going head to head with the 4600H in the the 6 core bracket is the Ryzen 5 3600, the best bang for buck chip in AMD's Zen 2 lineup. Then in a battle of the 8 cores, we have the Ryzen 7 3700X. I decided not to use the high spec models, the Ryzen 5 3600X and Ryzen 7 3800X or their XT variants, because I figured most people building a desktop PC are going to gravitate towards the cheaper models that deliver almost the same performance. While both Ryzen Mobile 4000 and Ryzen Desktop 3000 use the same CPU architecture, the overall design of the chips is very different. On the mobile side, we have a monolithic die with up to 8 CPU cores and 8 Vega GPU compute units, plus all the other fundamentals for an APU. Whereas the desktop chips use a chiplet layout, which puts the CPU cores and cache in its own die, with the I.O. and memory controllers left to a separate chip on the package. These desktop CPUs also lack GPU compute units. The laptops benchmarked for this video were tested in the same way as in our previous video, so each benchmark number represents an average of systems with the same configuration. We always create apples to apples hardware configurations where possible, so all systems here use 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory, and we test with the specified power limits in place, which are usually the defaults for a given chip. The full list of laptops we tested is in the description. On the desktop side, I wanted to use a system that was close to what these laptops are delivering, but still representative of how a user would actually build and configure a desktop. This video isn't designed to be a theoretical performance video where we limit down the CPU to the same power limits as the laptop chips, or use a GPU that is identical for performance. This is more about how AMD's mobile chips in a typical laptop fare up against AMD's desktop chips in a typical desktop. So what I settled on is using my X570 test system built in the Corsair IQ465X. It has an MSI X570 Tomahawk motherboard and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL16 memory. It's cooled using a Corsair H115i Platinum RGB all-in-one liquid cooler. We've got M.2 storage in there as well, all the usual stuff. Crucially, the memory configuration is the same as the laptops with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 in a dual channel configuration. 3200 speeds are the default for both AMD's Zen 2 desktop and mobile processors. However, one of the main differences does come in timings. Ryzen Mobile 4000 laptops typically stick to JetX speeds, which has CL22 timings. On the desktop, while you can run Ryzen using JetX speeds, most builders are going to hop into the BIOS enable. XMP is one of the first settings tweaks. So for our test system, that brings us down to CL16. Desktops are naturally a more flexible platform that allows you to tweak things like memory timings. On laptops, that stuff is you know, locked down by OEM. So this will present a potential performance advantage for the desktop. The GPU is also very important. So for these benchmarks, I'm using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060. Why? Well, the maximum GPU configuration you can get with Ryzen laptops is the RTX 2060 right now, but it's not quite the same RTX 2060. While the core and memory configurations are largely the same, on the desktop, this GPU can use up to 160 watts of power, while in laptops, the highest we've seen is 115 watts, with 90 and 80 watt power limits more common. This sees the laptop RTX 2060 run at much lower clock speeds. 
So what we'll end up with today is a look at how a Ryzen laptop performs up against a Ryzen desktop with the same CPU core count, the same but not really RTX 2060 GPU, and a similar memory configuration. Results should be very interesting, so let's get into it. We'll start here with Cinebench R20, and let's look first at the 8-core configurations. You'll see the Ryzen 7 3700X is listed as a 90-watt CPU. Of course, I am aware that both the 3700X and 3600 have a TDP rating of 65 watts, but we actually saw Hardware Info reporting package power consumption up to 90 watts in long-term workload, so that's what is listed here to keep, keep this metric the same as for our laptop CPUs. It's no surprise that the 3700X is the fastest processor in this chart, but what is a bit surprising is the margin to the Ryzen 7 4800H. The 3700X is just 12% faster in the multi-thread test. Granted, the 4800H can boost up to around 54 watts for the majority of a Cinebench R20 run, so the power gap between it and the 3700X does shrink a bit, but still, this does highlight the impressive efficiency of Ryzen Mobile 4000. And with only a 5% difference to single core performance, the 4800H is providing most of the single core performance that's on offer with Zen 2. The performance gap is even narrower when comparing the Ryzen 5 3600 to the Ryzen 5 4600H. The desktop 3600 is just 8% faster for multi-core and 7% for single thread. Again, that's very impressive efficiency from the 4600H, but perhaps even better is where the 4800H sits. The 3600 is actually 16% slower than the 4800H in this workload. So those buying a laptop with an 8-core AMD APU can achieve better performance than a 6-core desktop part, which as you can see from the Intel processors in this chart hasn't been possible in the past. Handbrake being a longer term workload is where the desktop CPUs with their much higher power limits can flex their muscles a bit. But even then, the 3700X isn't that much faster than the 4800H in this workload, producing just 17% better performance for a half hour encode. The 3600 is just 13% faster than the 4600H here too. It is great that chips like the 3700X can hit 4, 4.1 GHz all core on this sort of benchmark, but a Ryzen mobile chip like the 4800H is generally capable of mid 3 GHz all core. Pushing from around that 3.4 GHz mark up to 4 GHz throws us into the steep diminishing return section of the voltage frequency curve, which is why these desktop parts end up using a lot more power for only modest performance gains. Another example of this is Blender, where the Ryzen 7 3700X is around 13% faster than the Ryzen 7 4800H, while the 3600 is 10% ahead of the 4600H. For professionals, this sort of difference is nothing to scoff at and can be quite handy for some longer workloads, but realistically, you can achieve most of the performance of a desktop processor with AMD's Ryzen Mobile 4000. One workload where it's a fair bit better to have a desktop CPU is with code compilation looking at Chromium. The 3700X completed this lengthy compile 27% faster than the 4800H, while the 3600 was 19% faster than the 4600H. This is the first benchmark we've seen where the Ryzen 5 3600 is more on par with the 4800H than the 4600H. I'm sure that the desktop parts having a higher power limit and larger cache is helping out significantly here. A Microsoft Excel benchmark heavily utilizes the processor's cache, so desktop Ryzen CPUs have a strong advantage here. The 3700X and 3600 have 32 megabytes of level 3 cache, while the 4800H and 4600H have just 8 megabytes. That's a big difference, and in this workload it leads to a 30% plus performance advantage for the desktop processors. Anything that heavily utilizes cache in a similar way will see Ryzen Mobile 4000 limited in what it can achieve relative to AMD's desktop CPUs with their huge caches. In 7-Zip, it's really a tale of two workloads. On the compression side, Ryzen Desktop has a sizable advantage, again assisted by its increased cache and power limits. The 3700X and 3600 are both around 20% faster than their core-for-core -core Ryzen Mobile equivalents. But in decompression, the gap narrows to just single digits, around 6%, with the 4800H and 4600H both being able to boost up to 60 watts for short periods, Zen 2 mobile APUs can really get crunching on these shorter term workloads. In MATLAB, there's around a 10% performance lead for the 3700X over the 4800H, but this shrinks to just 4% when comparing the 3600 to the 4600H. The built-in MATLAB benchmark hits both single and multi-thread performance, so we end up seeing just modest performance gains here. 
For cryptography performance as measured by CSoft Sandra, there's really no difference between the desktop and laptop parts. This isn't hugely surprising given AES is hardware accelerated on Ryzen, and you'd think both variants would use the same fixed function hardware. With similar memory speeds as well, we end up with near identical performance. Next, we move into a few compute workloads that use both the CPU and GPU. And this is where we can expect the desktop PC to really flex its muscles, as it not only has a CPU performance advantage, but a GPU performance advantage as well. In Photoshop, we start to see that come to fruition, although as a not very GPU demanding workload, the desktop parts aren't that much faster. Still, the 3700X holds a 16% lead on the 4800H here, and with performance exceeding all other tested mobile configurations, there is definitely a reason to buy a desktop PC for Photoshop work. In Premiere, how much extra performance you get from a desktop setup depends on the situation. For live playback, both desktop and mobile setups are capable, especially if you have a reasonable discrete GPU. However, when it comes to exporting, the desktop holds quite a decent performance advantage of around 22%, comparing 3700X to 4800H, both with an RTX 2060. Even with just a modest RTX 2060 and 16 gigabytes of RAM, you'll have faster Premiere exports with a 3700X desktop than even the best laptop configurations with the power boosted Core i9 10980HK and RTX 2080 Super Max Q. Warp stabilization also presents a performance advantage for desktop Ryzen, but again, it's more modest at around a 7 to 8% lead over a core for core equivalent mobile processor. DaVinci Resolve is similar to Premiere exporting in that you're much better off with a desktop PC than a laptop in most instances, especially given DaVinci's strong utilization of GPUs. With the desktop RTX 2060 easily outperforming the laptop RTX 2060, we see the Ryzen desktop configuration pull nearly 30% ahead in this workload. I'm not going to leave gaming out of this video either because naturally that's an important part of the puzzle. Just a brief look at some of the titles that I tested, starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In this game there is a clear advantage to having a desktop PC, with the combination of a 3rd gen Ryzen CPU and the full power of the RTX 2060 delivering a 23% higher average frame rate than the mobile configuration. It's a similar story in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the desktop Ryzen configuration is delivering over 70 FPS in this benchmark pass, with the highest 1% low in the chart. Meanwhile, the laptop configuration with the same GPU is delivering a sub 60 FPS experience. This makes the desktop system 20% faster on average. On the other hand, a game like Watch Dogs 2 presents a more modest performance gain, though still respectable at a touch over 15%. Most of this is down to power limiting the GPU. Having the full up to 160 watts available for the RTX 2060 is such an advantage for games, and when combined with a more powerful CPU with lower latency memory, you get that increase to 1% low performance too. Time for some performance summaries, and here we have the Ryzen 7 3700X versus the Ryzen 7 4800H. In many workloads we see only single digit gains, particularly when a task is more lightly threaded, or more likely to run in this mobile CPU's boost power state. However, the 3700X does hold a substantial lead in cache limited tasks like Excel, and some longer term tests like code compilation, but generally, you'll only see around a 15% performance uplift in a typical multi-thread workload when going from the 4800H to 3700X. These gains do increase to 20 to 30% when the GPU gets more involved, such as in accelerated compute applications like Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. With the higher performing CPU and GPU working in tandem, the desktop configuration is able to pull further ahead. Margins are narrower comparing the Ryzen 5 3600 to the Ryzen 5 4600H, with multi-core workloads only delivering 8-12% to more performance with the desktop part in most tests. There's still the cache and compilation advantage for the desktop here, but the Ryzen 5 4600H is a remarkably impressive mobile CPU. Interestingly, the Ryzen 5 3600 is generally slower than the Ryzen 7 4800H, not in every workload, but in most. Despite its lower power limit, the 8-core mobile design of the 4800H is very efficient and able to deliver upwards of 15% more performance in some tests, making it a really capable laptop processor for productivity. Then for gaming, most of the gains you'll see between any configuration are related more to the GPU. The desktop variant of the RTX 2060 simply has a higher power limit and clocks itself higher while gaming, so even though a laptop may technically have an RTX 2060 inside, a reasonable desktop system with the same name GPU will be 20% faster on average. 
Just personally, I found this set of benchmarks super interesting and looking over the data, I was surprised how competitive AMD's Ryzen Mobile 4000 processors are. Historically, we've thought of desktops as being super powerful, unbeatable productivity powerhouses, but with the introduction of a part like the Ryzen 7 4800H, a laptop can now realistically achieve 85 to 90% of the CPU performance of an eight core desktop machine while outperforming a six core setup. This is particularly great news for those that want a strong productivity system, but don't necessarily need or want a large desktop setup and instead would find the portability of a laptop useful. In a lot of cases, especially when CPU power is the biggest concern, it doesn't make sense to go from a portable laptop to a fixed desktop for just a 10 to 15% performance gain. And this really isn't something that was possible before now, and especially at the price point AMD are targeting with Ryzen Mobile 4000. The 3700X, for example, is over 50% faster in Cinebench R20 than some of the best Core i7-9750H configurations we've seen. Previously, when tossing up between those sorts of systems, you take the desktop every time for real productivity work, it's just that much faster than a six core Intel laptop. Unless you were really rich and could afford to spend you know, thousands on a Core i9 laptop, a modest desktop setup was simply a far better option. But now we're seeing a whole lot of opportunities open up with the efficiency of AMD Zen 2 architecture, their monolithic APU design, and TSMC's 7 nanometer node. A 4800H laptop, or even the 4600H for that matter, really isn't a second-class citizen, it gets right up there for performance. While Ryzen Mobile 4000 is very impressive, naturally a laptop won't be a suitable desktop replacement for everyone. This is especially true whenever any sort of discrete GPU is involved, because simply put, laptop GPUs aren't as fast as desktop GPUs, even if they carry the same name. Thanks Nvidia for that mess. For productivity workloads, this could mean a 20 to 30% performance advantage for a same core count, same GPU name desktop setup. And of course, it's quite easy to go further above the performance on offer in a laptop through higher end parts, like GPUs above an RTX 2060, which is really only a mid-range desktop GPU, but especially higher core count CPUs, you can obviously put a 12 or 16 core AM4 option into your AMD desktop system. Similar story with gaming, there's nothing wrong with a gaming laptop in some circumstances, but realistically you are only getting a mid-range experience, even with the highest end parts available. A mid-range gaming PC with the Ryzen 5 3600 and RTX 2060 is a good 18% faster than a Ryzen 7 4800H and RTX 2060 laptop, and often this desktop configuration matches the best gaming laptops have to offer outside of the seriously thick and not very portable machines. And yeah, obviously desktop setups have a range of other benefits too, noise levels, peripheral support, and provided you choose well, better displays. Desktops tend to be better value as well, at least when comparing total setup costs to performance. There is no doubting that desktops are still the tool of choice in most situations. But again, thanks to Ryzen and genuine competition in the CPU market, laptop performance has been accelerating at a pace that really hasn't been seen in the last decade. I hope this continues and we see more tasks and possibilities become possible on portable systems. Ryzen Mobile 4000 feels like a step ahead in this regard, so the future is certainly quite exciting. That's it for this one. Hope you guys learned something and found this sort of desktop to laptop performance comparison interesting. It might help inform whether you're, you should go down the desktop path or go down the laptop path, depending on the sort of tasks that you're interested in. As always, you can support our work if you're interested via Patreon. Links to that are in the description below. Give this video, yeah, a subscribe. Well, you don't really subscribe to a video, do you? Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more laptop testing like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.